Um, I want to give you some, some insights, not on Bologna, but uh, more on innovations. I'm pleased to be here. I'm running the research at Catella, which is a Swedish-based uh, investment company. But um, I think we are really familiar with what uh, innovation really means. It's the main driver, especially on that kind of fair. Again, sounds boring, but I want to highlight some things out of that. How do we see as an investment company uh, the innovations and especially the scale of the cities um, we all make investments in? And um, to be honest, in my and in our world here at the fair, I think the first topics here, which is the so-called hard factors, are enormous. Everybody's collecting hard factors here at the fair, whether it's rents or yield level, the commercial tax reduction regimes and all these things. On one hand, Brexit, let's skip it on this case. But I think the most important thing for innovations um, is what you can see here. It's the so-called commercial groups and human capital. And this is, again, where if you divide this up, and I will see later on one or two slides on that, it's uh, what we try to achieve is to combine idolized both worlds, the commercial world, which is the office, innovation centers, business centers. This is what we are looking for here. On the other hand, the private sector, which is you and me, and uh, combination will be then the service, uh, restaurant, blah, 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 these things. It sounds, of course, first of all, as a quite an artificial world. We try to, and I saw the picture from Bologna, we are all looking and happy to see these kind of medieval structure. And this is, again, how can we translate these kind of working together, living together, co-working, co -working, Airbnb, all these things in the so-called 21st century. Um, investors with the money, they try to make a big effort on that. But honestly speaking, a lot of them failed because it's too artificial. And I think this is the main challenge for all of us, um, especially when it comes to this uh, pr um, perspective of urban innovation, the human capital will be definitely the most important thing. So it's you and me or our kids and children who run the whole things going forward. We just sit on the side and, and give some insights on that. Again, it's a kind of a vicious circle, of course, positively speaking. It all starts, well, with what? Traditionally, it starts with all these university-based startups, all these cool, smart people with a lot of venture capital, creating a hub um, supported by these large multinational companies or mid-sized companies, um, again, supported by the local regional network, like we see here, economic forums, government support, um, sometimes pushing factors like tax reductions or whatever. And then, of course, the big ones, the um, venture capitalists and the banks also supporting the thing. What does this mean? Again, it's a vicious circle. There is no stop and no beginning and no end. It's like the alpha and the omega. Um, again, this is what I see when it calls the artificial thing. Personal, I believe that this will be the main thing of that. It's the startup culture. These people don't wearing a tie, looking sometimes a little bit unshaved, especially the men, have an idea. An idea, it's uh, idea. Sometimes it's really hard to convince to bring these things together. Strict, correct, hard factor world, digging deeper in that uh, idea, idealized world. What does this mean, of course? In my life, simple thing like close to other relevant actors from the innovation network. So we see that this is not a wide spectrum in the urban sprawl. It's more densified in city centers or in innovation or in universities. Then everybody's crying for these days for these flexible workspace, co-working, work wherever you want, how long you are, whatever. And uh, of course, but please meet the people. And this is again, it doesn't really fit in the traditional long-term lease with a Generali in Milano for 10 years, uh, you see, things will get a little bit shaky in the thing. Again, and coming back to these things, uh, the buzzword here, where every of the cities you see here in MIPIM and Regent, it's how can we find the creative class? I uh, thought, what is creative class? These are obviously these ladies and gentlemen who are so smart, so innovative, who bring their idea in, nice um, in the situation, and uh, it's divided into three things. Technology, talent, and tolerance. Um, Richard Florida, for these guys who are more on the academic side of the world, Richard Florida um, starts a book, uh, I think it's around 10 years ago, and if you combina combine all these rings idolized, then you will become a creative class in an urban context. The big, big, big thing where a lot of these innovative class believers go, there it's uh, Vancouver, it's uh, New York, and in Europe, it's uh, also Stockholm, just to give you some indications on that. And again, same story, if you bring these things together, you see on the other hand, um, to be innovative means also you have to be affordable rents, you have to be this cultural life, and especially you have these local amenities. So again, a structure where we call as investors 
why the hell does he talk the whole thing on innovatives? It's that what is called a city. And city means uh, in these days uh, co-working and co-living. I'm struggling a little bit with that. On one hand, I'm paid, I'm on the balance sheet of Catella, cool company, but I'm just 10% of my lifetime, I'm in the office. But Catella pays me for 10 years, my rent for light, electricity, all these things, but I'm not there. What is, kind, what is that kind of a business model where our industry pays for space, we use less and less? The second thing is the co-living thing. Co-living means not that Airbnb case, but also these, um, I share my things. I share apartments, I share space, I meet more people. And these are, again, I bring two extremely things. One is the WeWork case in Liverpool, or WeWork in Berlin, or WeWork in Milan. The second thing, the co-living thing, which is starting improving here in Europe. Um, I take an example of uh, Taipei in Taiwan. Just to give you an indication, both factors are globalized factors. It's not a regional or a local or European one. It's what it's called a, a global phenomenon. The urban development is more and more driven by these co-phenomenon, co-working, co-living, maybe also co-shopping, whatever this means. And that they um, close to the last slide. There's a success factors, and now it comes a little bit deeper to our traditional business location, architecture, features, and of course the branding. And the branding, it's always I like branding, by the way. Um, you could have the fantastic property without a brand; it's nothing, I have to say. But again, your and my job is to how can we combine this in an idolized world: the location, the architecture, the feature, and the branding. Speaking positive, nine of ten innovation hubs, meanwhile, are based on what we called CBD, edge of the city, but not far, far away in the middle of nowhere, where it was than 50 years ago. Um, in the last decade. Architecture, meanwhile, becomes more and more unique. I like that. Features, of course, are meanwhile combined with a lot of these global network things. And the third one, the branding, I mentioned it already. I think branding creates also a new, think, new style of thinking um, when it comes to these things. A little bit advertised my employee, Catella. So if you want to see something idolized, then let's go to Stockholm, of course, and uh, go to the Epic Center. Um, these are all co-workers and uh, co-living people without a tie, honestly speaking, colorful. But uh, if I would delete that, this could be wherever you go. Milan, Bologna, London, King's Cross, who? Dublin, of course. So this is, again, for the first time in my, what say, MIPIM and MIPIM in real estate life, I see that a lot of these properties we see and a lot of ideas are unique and uh, uniformed, say this more on a neutral way. Last slide, um, what does this mean in the context is that obviously we as investors, you as investors, landlords, financiers, whatever, have to think how can we combine these efforts together. The co-living, I mentioned this, and we call it here, it's called mixed use. Mixed use, it's not that brand new, but obviously if you look on that next generation leaving the universities, obviously this is the first generation maybe, they live on the top of the building, in a penthouse maybe, they work in the middle and the co-working, stylish co-working atmosphere, and they go shopping in Starbucks at the basement. Of course, idolized, but this is a totally difference to what you see, obviously, in the last 10 or 20 years when it comes to new developments. I like the Bosco Verticale, no doubt. It's a resi tower, it's a green resi tower, but it's just resi. I wouldn't say this is negative, don't get me wrong. I see that the next step of evolution when it comes to innovative and innovations, of course, these uh, definitely mixed-use things, uh, obviously, what is in the DNA of investors, as Catella are. So combining things, I use the example of the Bolands Key in, in Dublin, where all these um, Facebook and Googles and, and LinkedIn are located. And then, of course, in Frankfurt, we have now the big one, the, the four Frankfurt. Smart people live here, work here, shop here in the city center. And this will create, of course, definitely a new medieval, and uh, the medieval, but uh, creating new CBD structures um, in our world. Thanks a lot.